Hey there, my name is Kim. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing some meal prep, so I thought I would take you along and show you what I am getting ready ahead of time this week to make a week run smoother. Today's Monday. So I pulled out some meat to thaw. Yeah, I dropped it on the ground outside of our freezer. That's why there's dirt on it. Got some chicken breast. We're gonna barbecue some. Actually, we're gonna barbecue all of it. Some of it's for dinner tonight, and some is going to be for um, lunch tomorrow. Also, thawing some salami for like snacks for Steve and the kids. And I'm making some um, creamy chicken soup that I need for a recipe. So I've got my chicken broth that I made and froze. I just thawed it mostly. Hang on. Not right now, hang on. Melting some butter. I'm gonna add some flour to thicken it and then add in my chicken broth and also some milk that's right on the verge. And then um, I'm going to refreeze it and then use it in my pasta dish later this week. I'm also making some bread, so I've got my yeast, sugar, and water proofing, or blooming, and then I'm gonna add in the rest of the ingredients, mix up the dough, and then I'll bake that loaf of bread. Yes, my pot is missing its handle. I still use it sometimes, though. I just hate throwing stuff away. the baby just finished up his breakfast. You can tell he's done when that goes on the floor. Yes, my floors are so disgusting right now. I didn't mop yesterday. And there's tons of crumbs from Gunner's breakfast. He had some toast with peanut butter and honey and a banana with some cinnamon. He hasn't been eating his bananas lately, but it looks like he really liked them with cinnamon, so that's good. Um, a lot of the toast ended up on the floor and crumbled though. <laughs> Add in some salt and pepper. It's still like warming up and thickening. I tasted it a little bit. It doesn't taste like kind of chickeny enough. I don't know, my broth just wasn't as strong this time around, I think. So I'm adding in a bit of this chicken bouillon concentrate as well. That's definitely better. I'm just gonna add a bit more salt though. All right, so there's how it's looking. It's thickening up okay. It definitely tastes right. So yeah, I'm just gonna let that thicken. I just reduce the heat quite a bit. So that cream of chicken is going to be for a ham pasta casserole that I found in a company's coming. Ooh, what am I doing? In a company's coming cookbook. So I don't like using canned soups. I feel like they just don't taste as good. So I always make cream of chicken. I always have lots of chicken broth because every time we make like a whole chicken, I'll make up chicken broth from the carcass and I freeze it. And so we always have jars of that on hand. And I just add some milk and seasoning, salt, pepper, and thicken it up with flour. So it works really well that way and it's much cheaper too. Um, so yeah, this ham pasta casserole, I'm not making it today, I'm just getting that stuff ready so I can throw it together. But it has macaroni, I use whole wheat macaroni, some sliced up ham or diced up ham, um, and then a little bit of mustard. So I think it'll taste kind of like chicken cordon bleu. Um, Maybe I'll add chicken to it, make it into like a chicken cordon bleu casserole. That sounds pretty good. But yeah, it sounded really good. Um, it's made similarly to my chicken broccoli rice casserole. Um, yeah, I think that'll be a good dinner. I really like buying those old companies coming cookbooks because they have so many interesting recipes I wouldn't have thought of. And simple ingredients and cheap too. They were written in the 80s, last time there was a recession. Well, no, no, not the last time. We had one in 2008. You know what I mean. <laughs> so I went to go check out and see how my yeast was blooming. It's sort of like halfway there, so I'm gonna leave it for a few more minutes and I'm gonna get my granola bar stuff ready. This is the recipe I'm talking about that I was gonna make this week. Oh, it sounds so good. Um, I really like meals that have like just a bit of meat like diced up and spread through. Um, it's cheaper that way, obviously, but also I just don't like eating that much meat. I've been like on and off vegetarian for a long time. So when I do eat meat, I like to just have it sparingly, kind of more use it as a seasoning. I also think it's much more sustainable to cook that way. But so chopped onion, macaroni. Okay, I don't feel like they need to tell you boiling water, but yeah, you uh, boil your macaroni. Um, cheese, ham, tomatoes, um, cream of chicken soup, which I made. I'm probably gonna double this, I think. Um, and then a little bit of mustard. So that sounds really good and easy. And like I said, I might add a little bit of chicken to it, like one chicken breast diced up to make like a chicken cordon bleu type recipe, but we'll see. Maybe I'll put some breadcrumbs on top too, but anyways, we'll see. So instead of making granola bars, I decided I'm gonna get some waffles ready. I preheated my oven to 350. I always use this Krusty's mix for pancakes and waffles. I just mix it up, add chocolate chips or blueberries, 
and I do a few plain and I'm just going to bake them in here. Normally if we're, I'm making them for breakfast on the weekends, I'll use my Belgian waffle maker, but um, I'm just making some to use throughout the week. So I'm going to make them in here and then I'll pop them out and put them in a freezer bag and then we can just put them in the toaster um, on school days. So yeah, I really like this mix. It's cheap and it's a massive bag. Like how big is this? I can't even see. Oh yeah, 4.5 kilograms, so it's huge. And um, it's like $10 or something, or maybe even less, or actually maybe more now with inflation. I haven't bought this since like Christmas. It lasts me like six months or more. Um, you just have to add water and it's really good. Well, it wasn't easy mixing this in such a small bowl. So I'm just about done. I'm going to portion it out into the waffle molds. Bubba. You want a Bubba? And and Bring me a Bubba, booty. Bah. What? I'm, I'm the I can't get Let's turn this off because it looks fairly know, thick and it'll thicken more. It'll thicken more as it cools. So I was going to make muffins, but I'm just not feeling it right now. So, um, because I wanted to use up some milk that's about to go bad. So instead, I think I'm just gonna make buttermilk out of it. So that's what the recipe calls for. I'm gonna do the milk, add in some vinegar, and I'm just gonna freeze it. And then I'll make the muffins next week when I feel like making them. All right, my yeast is just about ready. Just a couple more minutes. And then I'm gonna add in salt, oil, and flour. And I'm doing a half of this recipe today because I just want one loaf of bread because we have like three quarters of a loaf right now. Yeah? Here's the texture of my chicken, creamy chicken soup. So I'm just gonna get this into jars, let it cool all the way down, and then freeze it for when I make that pasta. So it almost all fit in one jar. I like to leave it a good inch of space so that the jar doesn't break when I freeze it. So I used two. Obviously this one's a lot lower, but it would have been way too full. And it might have broken otherwise. Well, I got all the other ingredients into my bread and I set it to dough, so it'll take two hours. I forgot there was a rip in the side of the bag and I went to roll it down kind of roughly, roll down the top of the bag and flour everywhere, even on my Mother's Day flowers. So that'll be fun to clean up. I don't even know how to get it off the flowers. I'm just going to like blow on them, I think. Ugh. All right, so I've got my milk in there. Just add it in. A little bit of white wine vinegar. I'll let that sit for a minute and then I'll get it into the freezer and I'll just use this when I need buttermilk for muffins. All right, I forgot to mention a couple hours ago. Ew, gross, what the heck? <laughs> um, I got some yogurt going in my Instant Pot. So I used half, what is that in there? I'll get that out. I used half a cup of yogurt that I had, um, two liters of microfiltered milk, and some vanilla, like a tablespoon of vanilla extract, and um, a can of sweetened condensed milk, which I've said before, probably, Probably sounds crazy, but it um, sweetens it really nicely and it thickens it. And oh, why is my Instant Pot so disgusting? Whatever. Um, and because it's such a large batch of yogurt, that's not like much sweetener, like per serving. Works out to less than like store-bought yogurt. So I usually set my yogurt for 10 hours. A lot of recipes call for eight, but I like it a little more tangy and thicker. So, and I use whole microfiltered milk too to make it thick. Um, so I'm gonna let that go for 10 hours and then I'll stick it in the fridge overnight and then I'll scoop it into containers. I think all I have left to do now is just make, oh man, dishes. Seriously, it was Mother's Day yesterday and so the house is a freaking disaster. And my husband did dishes yesterday, uh -huh. but still, there's so many little things I do and I just don't do them on Mother's Day. So I do them today.
this is partially from last night, partially from this morning. I cleaned out the fridge a little bit. But yeah, he did do a load of dishes, but there's just so many dishes all the time. Anyways, so um, I'm almost done, I think. I just need to um, make some granola for yogurt and granola. And I need to um, make some granola bars. And then I think I'm pretty much done once my bread it, oh no, the baby spilled the cat water. Oh, fun. Okay, anyway, so once my bread dough is done, I'll just throw that in the oven, but that is super easy. So it's been 20 minutes, but I think these need a few more minutes, so I'm just gonna put them in for another like three and then check. They look funny right now, but once you take them out and flip them over, they totally look like waffles. <laughs> okay, here's my ingredients for my granola bars. I think I might need a bit more honey because I need a cup, but we'll see. Honey, peanut butter, brown sugar. I bring these to a boil, add in peanut butter, add in some vanilla, and then I stir in my Rice Krispies and my oats. And then I press on some M&Ms and I do these in a mold. So it's super easy. Um, I have a recipe. I'll try and remember to link it in the description of this video so you can go watch that if need be, or if need be, if you'd like. And there's my timer for my waffles. So let's see. Yeah, those look great. So I'm gonna take those out and let them cool down. So that, that's all the honey that was in that container. So I am going to add a bit more. It's about two thirds of a cup here. So I need another third cup. All right, these have cooled down a little bit. So I'm just popping them out of their mold. You can see nice and waffly looking and then they fit perfectly into the toaster. So love that, much cheaper than buying toaster waffles. I used to buy toaster waffles all the time, love them, but they're so much more expensive now. It's like $10 for a box. So it's way, way, way cheaper to make these myself. I think it costs like 20 cents to make this batch here so yeah i don't know i could do the math but yeah much cheaper to make it okay so i didn't want the chocolate chips to melt on these so i left or melt i didn't want them to smear everywhere so i left those face up to cool um there's the blueberry ones so this will be one breakfast for the for all four kids um the big kids will each have two and then the little guys will just have one of these. But I have a little bit more um, batter left. So I'm gonna make two more waffles, one of them blueberry, I think, and one just plain. And then that'll be another breakfast for um, uh, the two little guys when the big kids aren't here. So yeah, gonna get those in. Well, it wasn't quite enough for two, but that's okay. These are just gonna be small and um, they can be for the baby. That'll be perfect. So I'll put those in for 20 minutes. They should be done in that amount of time, I think, because they're smaller. Oops. Yeah. Anyways, gonna get those in and back to my granola bars. All right. So there's my granola bar mix. I'm gonna go put, um, go put it into molds now. All right. So you don't want to let this sit too long because it firms up very quickly. But um, I do want it to cool down a little bit. So I just put like three M&Ms in each mold. That's enough. And then I just press the mixture on top of it. I used to press the M&Ms on top but they would um, get crushed when they melted. And then I realized, and sometimes they would fall out and stuff. And I realized, why don't I just put them in the bottom and put the granola bar mixture on top? Like, yeah, so that works much better. And then they have a much smoother sort of top to them. Anyways, we're gonna finish this. All right, there's the granola bars. M&Ms are on the bottom. And I had a little extra, so I made a big one. Oh my goodness! No, no, no. <clears throat> this one had some issues coming out, but I'm sure he won't care. I'm gonna rip it up for him anyways. There we go. Oh no, one fell out. That's fine. There they are. The m ms keep falling out, so I'm just gonna leave these a bit longer. Or like another half hour or so, and then I'll pop them out. All right, there's the ingredients that I need for granola. I just make a small batch usually. We really just have it on top of yogurt. So I'm just gonna combine all these things and throw it in the oven for 10 minutes, super easy. All right, so I'm super lazy and I didn't wanna pull out a bowl just for this, so I've got my dry ingredients here, oats, um, cinnamon, and salt. And then over here is my vanilla, maple syrup, and melted coconut oil. I'm just gonna combine that and ooh, kind of stir it together. I'm just gonna toss it with my hands actually, and I'll throw it in the oven. Yeah, couldn't be easier. Well, I mean, buying it would be easier, but, <laughs> you know. All right, that's going in for 10 minutes. And then I think I am done just waiting for my bread dough to finish. There they are, about two weeks, maybe a week, I don't know. Week and a half worth of granola bars. <laughs> 
so cute. So with those granola, wow, with those granola bars, um, like I made a big batch for my dad a little while ago, like a week or two ago, and he says they're that they're like the best granola bars ever. Like he finds them very filling. Um, he forgot to eat dinner before going to work one night. He works like 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. kind of thing. And so he was really hungry. And so he grabbed two of those homemade granola bars and he has um, raisins in his instead of M&Ms, but he just found like even those two really held him over until he could eat more. And um, the kids find that too. I packed them one or two. They're a really good snack. They've got like oats and the Rice Krispies, uh, peanut butter, honey, that little bit of brown sugar too. But overall, overall, good filling snack. I really like making those and the kids love them. And two M&Ms, two, three M&Ms on top, I really don't think it's that big of a deal, sugar wise. Here's my granola. I'm just gonna let that cool fully before I put it into the container I keep it in. And then, um, by the time that's done, I think my bread dough will be done and I can get that into the oven. My granola's done, I'm gonna get it into a container. Um, I'm just making some lunch, <sighs> making some whole wheat macaroni. I put a tiny bit of cheese whiz, like a tablespoon in it because it makes the sauce so nice and creamy. And throw in some of this beer sin that needs to be used up and a handful of shredded cheese and a splash of milk and also a little bit of butter. So I'm gonna probably make the whole box. We'll eat like maybe half or a third probably a third of it for lunch. And then I'm gonna save the rest as like a side for dinner tonight or um, like uh, for lunch for my daughter or something tomorrow, we'll see. All right, my bread dough is done. So I'm just gonna get it into this pan and let it rise on the stove for a few minutes and then throw it in the oven. This bread is just about ready to go in. My macaroni's done, so I'm gonna drain that and add in other stuff. And yeah. Got buffalo sauce and pepper, my four year old and my one year old. Bread, I'm just gonna let it cool down and then I'll slice it up. Here's what I prepped today I've got the loaf of bread, lots of granola bars, waffles, that'll be two breakfasts, some eggs. I actually made these last night. There's my buttermilk, it was in the freezer, I just took it out for this. Um, my cream of chicken soup, the granola, and then of course the big thing of yogurt, but it's not done yet, so it's not included in the pitcher. I wanted to cut up a tray of veggies, but I don't have the fridge space for it right now because my husband got me a cheesecake last night for Mother's Day, and so it's taking up the space that my veggie tray would normally take. I grocery shopped on Friday, today's Monday, so the fridge and the mini fridge are both very full. <laughs> it's not a bad problem to have. <laughs> um, yeah, that is everything that I have for you today. Thanks for watching my meal prep video. So many dishes to do now.